All right, it's Stephanie again with the patient story. Uh, Bobby's just gone through talking to us about his mantle cell lymphoma treatment. And we just learned that, um, Bobby, you were part of this clinical trial that got a lot of coverage recently, actually. And in fact, you went to the lead site on this, MD Anderson, because um, Dr. Michael Wong, you know, is sort of the guy here and he was your doctor. So I would love to ask you um, first, I guess, how you even you know, uh, discovered the clinical trial? Was it just because you'd gone to MD Anderson and they said, hey, you qualify? Or how did that start? Actually, my, you know, again, I, I, I'm leaning very much on my wife in, in this situation. And she she actually heard about the clinical trial before we, we went down. And um, she was very much an advocate for me to get in the trial. Uh, we thought we were going to be um, on the outside. Uh, because they had only taken so many patients, and then by the time we got down there, they actually expanded it. So I was in the I was in the expansion draft part of the clinical trial because I think they had limited to like a hundred at first, mm. and I believe I was like number 140, 141. Wow. So we got in because they actually uh, added fifty more, and so I barely got in, and. Um, it was something that we wanted to do. Um, I felt very, very positive about it. Uh, of course, um, when we got there, the, the doctor I was assigned to was Dr. Michael Wong, uh, who is a superb doctor, uh, great. Um, the first day we ever met him, he walked in and he said, however long this takes for you to be here, you answer, you ask any questions you have, he says, I'm here until, you, until you're ready to, to go. Wow. So, um, you know, just a super human being. Um, the staff there, his, his team, um, um, just absolutely. Now, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember um, uh, Orlando was my first nurse. I can't, and then his physician's assistant, Anyinka. Um, I have, I'm sorry, but I have to, I have to, but they're just a wonderful team, just absolutely yeah. wonderful team. Well, don't apologize. We are all about, you know, shining the praises on the people who make it so much better and easier um, for those of us who have to go through this terrible process. Um, and so, Bobby, can you, you know, for people who are interested in clinical trials but have never experienced them, I mean, did you have to sign a lot of paperwork? What was that process like? Okay, so uh, because of the of the way the trial was set up, the abrutinib uh, tablets that I that I took during the trial uh, actually uh, were at no cost. Um, uh, the, the pharmaceutical company supplied those as part of the clinical trial. Uh, they would give we would have to go to the pharmacy there at the hospital, uh, get the pills. Um, we had to keep a log of when I took the pills. Uh, uh, my temperature, took, had to take my temperature. There was a couple other things. Sorry, I can't remember. Um, when we would go back to the hospital um, or, or to the clinic, uh, they would take the bottle. They would count all the pills that I had left and make sure that everything was accounted for, the number of days that I took them and the pills that were left over. So um, there was a part of the trial um, where actually I got a sinus infection uh, during the uh, during the trial for uh, which I'm very uh, susceptible to getting and um, I could take no medication for that and um, I remember my fever uh, if it got above a hundred uh, I was gonna have to go to the hospital and it got to 99.9 and um, just barely got under the wire there but um, uh, I couldn't take anything for it um, because any, any medications or anything that I took uh, during the trial period uh, may have effects on it. So if there were some medicines that I would normally take that I could not take during the trial. Yeah, no, that makes sense. You kind of want to keep it. Um, uh, but everything was very regimented. Right, 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 very strict. Um, and so if you had passed, again, that 100 degree, if you had passed a certain mark, would they have said you can't be in the trial anymore? It's too risky? Well, I, uh, no, actually, they, they would have just gone in and made me stay there. Mm, gotcha. If my temperature had gone above 100, it had just been something they would have just watched. 
Gotcha. Um, because it was, like I said, it's something I normally get. It wasn't life threatening or anything like that. Right. I just couldn't take anything for it. Okay. So it was just going to have to run its cycle without getting the medication. Bobby, did they talk about, um, you know, what qualified you for the clinical trial or what would preclude you from it? I, I, I really don't remember what would have kept me out other than the numbers. Okay. Um, the numbers? I do know there were some people that were denied to go in the trial um, for various reasons. I, I just, I don't remember. And when you say the numbers, you just mean? Like the number, like, like if it, they had kept it at 100. Oh, right. Okay. I would not have been able to, to get in the trial. Gotcha. Gotcha. Had, the had they not expanded it, I would not have been in the trial. What made you so sure, you and your wife both, that this was the way to go as opposed to the conventional route? I just, you know, taking chemotherapy, um, knowing that I would not have taken as many rounds of chemotherapy, uh, the trial had a very good success rate by not taking the chemotherapy. Chemotherapy, and, and you, you probably already know this, but, you know, we were told that chemotherapy in and of itself may cause cancers later in life. And so one of the reasons why they want to back off the six treatments before was to make sure that, you know, the side effects years from now that another cancer develops from the chemotherapy. Um, but um, we just felt very strong that, you know, doing the clinical trial was the way to go. The success on those that were in it was very high. And so we felt very, very positive about it. And in fact, you said you met the first person to undergo the trial. Um, how, did the, how did that happen and what was that like? Well, you know, we, we were there actually just for a, a, a checkup and um, he was there for his checkup. And um, it was like, hey, and, and my wife had a Facebook page um, just for mantle cell lymphoma patients at MD Anderson Hospital. She, sort of started her own and uh, he had joined. And so anytime we ever go, we, we just let the group know, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna be down there in case you wanna meet. Of course, and today it's a little difficult uh, with, with COVID, but um, anyway, yeah, but he was in the, he was in the waiting room waiting to go in. And uh, yeah, it was pretty unique to see the, the first guy in the trial. Do you know how long before you, he had started the trial? Maybe six months. Okay. And and when you saw him, was he, it was like, oh, he's gone through it. He looks great. I mean, did he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he looked he looked fine. And you know, you know, it's always encouraging to see somebody that's gone through the the, the entire deal because you look at him and and I I'll I'll be honest. There, there was a, a gentleman that actually called me and wanted to talk to me, similar to you know not as in-depth as, as what we're discussing today, but when I finished talking to him, he goes, well, I believe that if you did it, I can do it. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's always encouraging to see somebody that's gone through. Right. And, and yeah. You, know, you, there, you can survive. It's, it's just a matter of, of just knowing that, you know, it's a brief part of your life. Right. Right, clinical trials, I know it's, uh, people react to them differently, but it's so important for research. Um, sometimes it's the only option for some patients. Um, just out of curiosity, if, if you had been that person and, and it, you would have been the first patient to undergo the clinical trial, would that have changed, I guess, your uh, willingness or desire to participate? No. Okay. If I'd have been the first one, I, I, would, have, I would have done the same thing. Um, and, you know, just the, just the fact that, you know, you're, you're, you're with people that are very smart and you just, you just have to trust your doctors. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like you had great rapport with your doctor, Dr. Wong. Um, yeah. One of my last questions on this, uh, Bobby, is just the monitoring. Did they explain how it would be different, uh, how often you'd be monitored or did you have to write journals or do any of those kinds of things? Did you have extra checkups with the doctor because of the clinical trial? Well, I think only because, you know, we were going back so uh, 
frequently because we had to go back every month to get the pills refilled. We did have a journal, uh, you know, that, you know, every day, you know, we had to write down, you know, pills were taken. We didn't skip any pills. Uh, I did have to skip pills because I brewed them as a blood thinner. Um, I did have to skip every time I would have a colonoscopy. Um, because of when they were doing the biopsies in the colon, uh, they could not, they would not be able to do that had I took the ibrutinib. So I had to stop taking it like three or four days prior to the colonoscopy and three or four days after. But it was all part of the protocol. Gotcha. So it, it, all that was actually built in and they all knew that. But, okay, right. Yeah, it always scared me because the pills are very expensive that I would drop one or lose one. So, you know, we kept up with the pills. We kept the journal up. Um, also, I will say this, uh, when I became, and I, I didn't mention this before, but I guess, you know, going through the trial, I did opt as a patient uh, to allow the hospital to take uh, extra blood samples, uh, extra tissue samples, anything that they needed extra because you know, I felt like there were people that have gone through this before me that did that. And because I'm at a research hospital, the more that they have, the better it is. So you know, hopefully whatever I left for them to, to do their research on will help somebody that's behind me now. That's and I would encourage anybody that's going through this that if they're asked that they would they would allow that because I mean you're already stuck in a lot of cases so what's one more vial? Right, right, right. All in the name of helping other people, hoping exactly. it'll get even better for the people who follow. Um, did in the journal you had to write that you were you were documenting that you were taking the dibrutinib. Did you have to write down side effects and feelings or anything else? No, no there was not really any feelings, but uh, like any side effects that we may have had, which you know. I believe that going through the trials, I was the only patient that I, that I know of that never had to take any platelets. Um, uh, never, never missed work um, other than the treatment days and when I was in the hospital. Um, actually ran some during the second phase, uh, but that was in the last week. Right. Um, so I was able to exercise, um, you know, and, and pretty much, it was pretty normal for me uh, during the whole whole trial basis. Yeah, yeah, you had a good a good experience, is yeah. what I'm hearing. And I missed that first word you said. You might have been the only patient who didn't miss. Oh, that I, I, I never had to take any platelets. Oh, platelets like blood platelets. transfusions. Yes, and, yes. Gotcha. Well, I think I was the only one that did not have to have that done. Uh, my last question um, is, as a result of the clinical trial and having gone through it, um, what was the follow-up like for that in particular? Did you have to submit anything extra? No. Okay, so once I finished the trial, um, my, my last day of treatment was March 3rd, 2017. Uh, we went back to see um, uh, Dr. Wong at the end of March, um, just just as a follow-up visit. Uh, my first two years of remission, uh, we went every uh, four months. And then my second two years, um, every six months. Uh, my, my last six month treatment will be in um, May of next year. And I've already been told um, when, that, when that is shown to be clear, then um, I will start going once a year. That's fabulous news. And, and you said checkups consist of a PET scan and a doctor visit each time? Yeah. Yes, we did go by and see the doctor uh, pre-COVID. Um, he would just basically check me and say, enjoy your life. <laughs> so, you know, everything's been cool. That's, you couldn't ask for better news. Um, so to your knowledge, there's really nothing um, different about the follow-ups just because you went through the clinical trial. It's it's the way that it would be if you'd gone through the conventional. I believe that would be correct, yeah. Okay. 
um, actually I did, didn't ask, but um, you know, I know the uh, pharmaceutical company uh, gave the ibrutinib for free. Um, was there any insurance, I guess? Um, do you have any advice about how to deal with payments or insurance or any of that kind of logistical um, you know, work when it comes to clinical trials? And did you have, I mean, they typically have people who help you, of course, with, with all of that. Yes, and I will say this, the, 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 the clinic and the hospital, uh, there's an advocate there for you. Um, there's a dietitian there for you. Um, but they bait you when when we first went, uh, the advocate that we spoke to about the insurance and things like that, they they get everything squared away. Um, you know, every test and, and my insurance company was fabulous. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no complaints with, with the, my insurance carrier. Um, okay, I mentioned their name as well. It was uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana. Um, never had a hiccup, never got any denials. Uh, they were just absolutely wonderful. So uh, wow. I appreciate all that they did, um, you know, during that. Because, I mean, that's a load that's, that's taken off of you. A big one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I've said, wow, a record number of times during this interview, um, you know, in a great way. I think you've gotten great support, and I'm really happy to hear of your experience. So we're going to move on to the very final section. Um, and so sit tight if you want to hear more of Bobby's reflections. 